In this video, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to teach you and how I'm going to teach you about qualitative methods. I'm mapping basic topics of conversation. Completely different pictures. So, let me tell you what you're going to get from our qualitative weeks on the unit. You're going to get three things, three things. The first two things you'll be assessed on through assessment one. The third thing you won't be assessed on at all, but it's going to set you up for your level three methods unit and beyond. So what's the first thing you'll learn? Uh, the first thing you learn to do is mapping themes. This is all about analyzing qualitative deck data. Second, you will learn how to contrast qualitative and quantitative methodologies to help you avoid doing either of those things badly. And that will also help you with the mapping exercise, you know, when you're doing the mapping with the qualitative analysis. And the third thing is learning how to plan a qualitative research project. So we're going to do all of that in our four weeks. We're topping and tailing the unit. So we have teaching weeks one and two, and then we've got teaching weeks 11 and 12. In teaching weeks one and two, that's when we're going to concentrate on the mapping and the analysis and the differences between quantitative and qualitative research. And in teaching weeks 11 and 12, that's where I'll tell you all about how to plan a qualitative project. And remember, those final two weeks have content that's not being assessed, but that's content that will set you up for level three of your studies. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, the mapping skills that you'll get from this unit, the qualitative mapping skills. These will be skills you can apply to research but also to many other areas. Anytime you read a book, read an article, watch a documentary, watch a movie, whatever it is you do that involves you forming a view of something, you can apply the principles of qualitative analysis to that material to provide new and interesting ways of thinking about the material and for stimulating some discussion about that material with your peers. So that's what you will learn. Oh, the project planning, it, you'll learn you'll learn the key things you need to think about when putting a qualitative research project together. I'll give you a, a little clue, not a clue, a um, spoiler. It's going to be, a lot of it's going to be about how much time it takes to do qualitative research. Okay. So that's what you will learn, but how will we learn about qualitative methods? What are the teaching methods that I'm going to use for our qualitative research sessions. We've been planning it for some time now. Well, four modes. We've got four modes for you. The first is pre recorded teaching materials. The second, live online tutorials. The third, a prescribed textbook. And the fourth is an online QA Moodle forum. That's four, isn't it? I can't add up. I'm a qualitative researcher. I don't do numbers, except when I'm grading your work. Then I'm very good at it, I promise you. Okay, so let's go to the first mode. This is the pre-recorded teaching materials. This is the mode that's often delivered via lectures, but what we're going to do is something a bit different to a lecture. The materials will be much shorter than the traditional one-hour lecture because, well, these days, who has an hour or more where they can sit in a lecture theater or in front of a screen. Well, except for watching the latest movie like Top Gun or something, but that's different. You know, that's an ex exception. That's our chill time. That's okay. That doesn't count. Um, people are finding it, students are finding it harder and harder to, to have put a whole hour aside. So the pre-recorded materials will be short bite-sized piece, pieces, hopefully not any more than 15 minutes each. They might add up to an hour, but each little bit will be 15 min around 15 minutes. That's the plan. So I, what I'm trying to do is make the materials accessible by making them shorter so you can view them in the spare moments you get in your busy life. But also to make, I'm going to make them accessible by publishing them on my YouTube channel. If you want to find my YouTube channel, I'll put a link up in the, on the Moodle site. But basically all you've got to do is search for Paul Ducker on YouTube and you'll find me. With the videos being on YouTube, that means you can access them both inside of Moodle, but also outside of Moodle. I'd like you to 
be inside Moodle as much as you can, because that's where most of the resources are going to be. But I'm making the videos accessible outside of Moodle, Moodle so that after you've completed the unit, and I'm sure you'll complete it successfully, you can go back and view those videos, even though you're not enrolled in the unit anymore. You know, because typically when you finish a unit, you're not enrolled in the unit anymore, you can't access those materials anymore. So this way you can access them whenever you like, as long as they're up on YouTube. Okay, as long as someone doesn't take my YouTube channel down. The second mode are live online tutorials. Now, if you're an international student, that means registered as an international student rather than being someone like me. You know, I'm from the UK, I'm not an Australian, but I've migrated here and I'm now a permanent resident. Um, so I don't mean international in that way. What I mean is if you're an international student and you're registered as an international student, you need to come onto your nearest campus to take part in our tutorials. It's part of the condition of your visa, you know, that you have to be on campus for a certain percentage of your time. Domestic uh, students, distance students, d domestic distance students, if, if you can't get to campus or study hub, watch from wherever you want. The tutorials are going to be small group based. We'll mostly be working in small groups with discussion items or activities that I will set in advance. If you're online on your own, i.e. you're not in a study hub with other students, I'll put you in a breakout room in Zoom with a few of your classmates, online classmates. If you're on a campus with other students and you're all logged into the same computer, which is the way the room should be set up for you, um, then you'll work in that group that you're with in that room. Now, I will be in the tutorial at the scheduled tutorial time, but I won't be talking very much. Tutorials are not the place to hear from me. It's not, this is not the, the, the mode for me to talk to you. It's the mode for you to talk to each other. You hear from me in the pre-recorded materials. So I'm not going to speak very much in the tutorials. It's a place for you to speak to your classmates. And that means if you can't attend the scheduled tutorial, and many students can't these days because of work commitments and family commitments and so on, um, you can organize your own tutorial with other classmates who can't attend the scheduled tutorial either. You'll have all the materials posted up on Moodle that you can use to have your discussion and engage in the activities that other students did in the in the tutorial where I was at. You just have to organize that yourself. I can't organize that for you. Just organize that yourself. And you can organize that through leaving messages for each other on one of the other modes, the forum, Moodle forum. I'll get to that in a second. The other thing about tutorials is that as well as me not speaking much at all, it means I won't be answering questions. And I'm certainly not going to be answering questions in the tutorial about the assessments. That's because we can't record our tutorials. We can't record them because we're going to be working in small groups. And the system, the Moodle system, only allows us to record in one room. We're all going to be spread across all of these little breakout rooms. We can only record in one room. So that's why we're not going to record. And in any case, the whole point about the tutorial is the participation. It's not the watching other people talk, it's about taking part in the discussion. So two reasons why we're not recording them. So if I was to offer any advice about the assessments in the tutorial, the only people who will hear it are the people who are able to attend that tutorial. And, and there'll be a lot of people who won't be able to hear that advice. And that's not fair. And the other thing is, because we're a large class, we need to bring in an additional marker or two to help us mark the assignments. You know, we've got to mark the assignments in two weeks. If there's only me marking all of the assignments, I'm not going to be able to get it done in two weeks. So we have to bring in some people to help us. And if I give you advice about the assessment in a tutorial, those other markers aren't going to hear it either because they aren't going to be in the tutorial. They're not paid to be in the tutorial. They're just going to be paid to do the marking. They won't hear the advice that I'm giving to you in the tutorial. So that's why we're not recording tutorials. Uh, that's why I'm not answering questions about assessments in tutorials. That's why I'm not speaking very much in tutorials. But fear not, 
I will answer questions about the assessment and about other stuff on the unit. And that's through our third modality, our online forums in Moodle. So I answer questions through the Moodle online forum. That's the place to ask your questions because everyone will get to see your question and they'll get to see my answers. But I'd also like the forum to become a bit of a community where people help each other out, where classmates help each other, where you help your classmates and where they help you. So when you log on to Moodle and you go to the Q&A forum, if you see a question that I haven't answered, um, because it sometimes takes me a little while to get to the forum, have a go answering the question yourself. The, the best thing about doing that is that, as well as it being just a nice thing to be doing for your classmate, it it's, gives you a real indication of your learning. You'll know if you know the stuff, if you can answer someone else's question about the stuff. So it's a way of testing your knowledge. And you can do that without having to worry about making a mistake because your answer isn't going to get graded. It's just going to be on the forum. It's just you trying to be helpful. If you give someone the wrong answer, I'm not going to step in and give you a, fa a fail grade. You know, what I will do is I'll step in and give the right answer. So you don't have to worry about giving someone a, 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 a bad answer because I'll step in and correct you if I need to. But, but don't panic. I'll, I'll do that in a way that doesn't make you look like an idiot. I'll do it in a way that makes you feel good about yourself, even if you've <laughs> given a, a dumb answer. I will make you feel good about yourself because you tried to help someone. Okay. So that's what I'd like you to do. Try and answer each other's questions and I'll be, I'll be making sure you're on track and it's a good way of learning. Gets to our fourth and final mode of teaching and that's our textbook. The textbook gives you the chance to hear from other academics who are discussing qualitative methods. So you don't just hear my voice, okay? You hear the voice of other academics. Now, they are academics, the authors of our textbook, two of them, Braun and Clark. They're both academics, they're psychologists, they're the type of psychologist I am, like they work in that critical psychology space, but they're not me. You know, they're not the same as me. So don't be surprised if they say, say or write things differently to what I say. And don't be surprised if they cover things that I don't and I cover things that they don't. Um, I don't cover the textbook in my pre-recorded materials because the textbook covers that content. You can read about it. I'm not going to replicate it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to just have a video where I'm just reading out bits of the textbook or saying, look at page so-and-so. Here's a picture of page so-and-so. Have a look at this. You know, I'm not going to do that. You read the textbook, okay? That's, that's a separate thing. I just, in my pre-recorded materials, I provide you with a different way of thinking about the key topic, my way of thinking about the topic. And um, for us, it'll be about data analysis, you know, about the key issues I think are important when thinking about doing data analysis and how to go about doing the mapping of analysis, okay? And about the contrast between qualitative and quantitative and project planning. You know, the things we're covering on the unit. There'll be no straight lines. And that's the key. None of these four modes replicate or replace any of the other modes. You can't get everything from the textbook. You can't get everything from the tutorial. You can't get everything from my pre-recorded materials. And you can't get everything from the Q&A forum on Moodle. Each mode supplements the other. None of the modes will replicate or replace the other, okay? So don't rely on one or two of them or three of them. Engage with all four of them. Okay, that's the pre-recorded lectures. That's the tutorials, on online live tutorials, the, the, text, the forums and the textbooks textbook. I'm confusing it out. Don't worry, it's just one textbook. That textbook, by the way, you buy that and it's the same textbook you use. You'll use at level three. You don't have to buy it, get it from the library or however else you might get it. But it's the same textbook we'll use at level three in our level three unit. Okay, so that about sums it up. 
uh, it, that should prepare you for our first week and our next video I think is going to be about qualitative analysis. Haven't made it yet, but I think that's what I've got planned. Well, you'll soon find out. So till my next video, whatever it happens to be, ta-da.